Okay, folks, here we go. A bit uh, of a rushed um, set up here, but we've got a fourth round match in the eight ball bar table world championships, and it's between a Cero and Semi Pro. They're just waiting me getting in to get it uh, covered. And um, race to 11. And it looks like it's going to be semi-pro to break. Yeah, I just got messaged by semi-pro that they were going to start the match and I was still in a match. So I've managed, I hope I've got things set up right. So, we've lost a six ball, and remember it's an open table until either player has nominated a set of balls by potting the next one after the break. I'll have a quick drink. So the nine ball has been comboed, the semi-pro on the stripes. Well the problem ball is the, is that the 12? Let's have a look, I think it's the 12 on the right hand side there which is immediately trying to promote which he's done it's a good shot and he just needs to drop onto this 11 ball the 13 ball in the right rail is going to go down the rail or down into this bottom right hand corner pocket so the 11 is going to be the the one to deal with now maybe he's got the rules of this wrong here I think you've got to hit your own ball first as far as I'm aware For a second there, I thought he was going to play the 7 on the 11, but uh, as far as I'm aware, that's a, an illegal shot hitting your opponent's ball first and 8 ball. And a little cannon on the 7, but he's finished pretty close to the 11. And he needs to be careful he doesn't collide with this 7 ball to try and get up for the 15. And it was too close. Just give me two seconds, if I can find the right button, hang on a sec. Right, we're good to go. Oh, wrong button again. Hit the wrong button again that time. Get the little plug in. Right, so we can settle down. We've got a set at the table. Semi pro missed the 11 ball, but the 15 and the 2 are tied up. Now, is a set going to try and. Well, I thought he's maybe going to try and play a combo there, 3 on to the 15 and nudge the 2 in. It seems to be the only way he's going to get that out. And he went for the cut and tried to come off the 2 rails and nudge the 2. So now we're going to get a bit of. Uh, cat and mouse going on here. Now if he can get this right he could actually hook uh, semi pro on the 11 as well as the 15. That's not a bad effort. He certainly covered the 11 and if he had just gone further into the corner he would have semi pro in a lot of trouble and now he might call the cross bank. Nope. 
not risking it. A similar shot again here for a Cerro, unless he's going to call a bank, but he really needs to try and get that two out, and it's a big, big risk throwing all your eggs into one basket, trying to break open the two. Well, he's taking the risk and he might pay the price. This is all just about the pace. So anything but dead straight on this 15 ball. And that hasn't worked out. So now Semi Pro is going to have to try and just hide behind the 15 here if he's going to be gentle or he's going to go for distance. But he can't, he can't keep that two ball safe. So he's just trying to hide. I don't know whether he's, hide, he's hid it enough, whether uh, Acero can clip the two. Let's have a look from this angle. Oh, he can cut that in, and if he gets it thin, he might chip off the seven. He needs to be careful of the scratch here. Well, not risking it, keeping it tight, which is the wisest thing to do. So now Acero has got himself in a fair position here. Now, semi pro is going to call the kick on the 15, but even if he does get it, the cue ball is still going to be down in this corner, and he's going to have a tough eight ball. It's going to be a tough cut. Good shot, though. Now, these pockets are fairly generous as long as you leave them at the pocket pace. That's what I seem to have found by looking at the games. But he's overdone it, or he's underdone it rather. And now Acero is actually in a spot of bother here. He's going to have to go all out here for this seven ball unless he's going to try and hide behind the two. But remember he's got to get to a rail. Now to me, the bank into this corner pocket that he's at this corner pocket here looks good to me. It's worth the risk. It's an all or nothing shot, but uh, I don't know whether he's going to get a great deal of success off of this two ball. I mean, does that two squeeze past the eight? Well, he could, he could try and nudge it down to the jaw and nudge it in behind the eight and block the pocket. I don't know whether he's up and look closely at that, but he's too close to the two. Well, that's an excellent shot. That is an excellent effort. Very difficult to read the cut angle in that too. And Acero is going to Pinch this first rack. It's a good first rack, promising for the rest of the match. And this again, two fairly strong players, and it's difficult to judge what way these games go. I think I think there's a bit of a lottery about it. I mean, I don't know whether any of have watched the 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 last stream I did. It's on YouTube on my YouTube channel. Um, Larry played Bedhead. Bedhead beat him 11-0. Larry hardly ever got a sniff in the game. The balls wouldn't break right and uh, whenever Bedhead came to the table he was cleaning up basically which is the main objective of any game and Bedhead was on form and I don't think Larry actually got a half a reasonable chance until halfway through the match and when he did he missed it. That's how tough it is when you get high quality players mixing in in this game. But anyway, we're into rack two and semi pro is on the solids. A set of the stripes combo being called in the two. I'm looking to see where the problems are here for 
semi-pro. This could be a, a quick response here. The only problem ball is a seven. And I don't think he's run far enough for it, has he? Oh, yes, he's plenty of room. In fact, I'd be taking the seven ball right now, unless he wants to come out behind it. Which he's decided to do. And now he has to avoid the blocking balls to get this pink four ball. Probably better been a wee bit more aggressive here to make sure he finds the gap. And just got the pace right. Well, now he's out of line. And this is a problem for these guys where, I mean, I know semi-pro plays a lot in the the, uh, the UK pub table and the, the pace in that is, as far as I'm concerned, is faster than what's, what this is. And, of course, the balls are different. And uh, these players have got to get used to the pace of the table. So... The chance is gone for semi-pro and Acero has a bit of work to do although provided he takes these balls in the right order he needs to get rid of the 10 ball and he can do that now he can pot the 11 he can stun on to the 15 he's looking at the 14 though uh, that that could have went wrong there if he'd gone the other side of the 15, but now he can deal with the 10. This cue ball just going to run through. There's a bit too much angle in this pink stripe, so he's going to have to get the pace right. He can just drop through and leave the cut into the middle of the long nine ball up into the top right. And he's played that with a lot of inside English to spin it around a corner, and that'll do it. Just a little roll through. So it's a good strong start here for Acero. Um, certainly the first rack could have went either way, but semi-pro looked as if he was running out, finished short in the eight ball and left himself an awkward shot on it. And uh, well, that's all very well, but Acero still had to run the table. Wasn't a difficult run out. And it's now 2-0. And this time... And remember as well, it's an alternate break uh, tournament, alternate break format, so semi-pro broke, and he's broke dry, and these balls, they don't look bad. I mean, there's not a ball touching another ball, and that is an open invitation for a run out, provided you can pick your way through them. And that one, I just run... A little too far for Acero. He's now out of shape. He's got an awkward seven and he's on the solids. Now let's see if that two ball goes past the eight. Yes, it does. Well, he's looking at that four. He can't see it, which is a good thing because it's forcing him into taking the six and he can get rid of the three at the same time here. Just drop through the little gap. Well, I'm a bit puzzled as to why he tried that. He's left himself awkward. And he's not in a good line here to get back up for another ball. He needs to keep going to get that one ball, but now he's he now he's sort of backed himself into a corner here. He's going to have a choice of two balls, but the problem is the angle. The angle he's got isn't good. He's got too much angle in this one. 
And I think he made the wrong choice there. He should have got rid of that three ball. First chance he had there. But he's still on the two. And this is just a little gentle one. He needs to be careful he doesn't block himself here. A little bit of top. Just to go through. And this could go exactly the way the other rack, the last rack went. Semi pro got down as far as the eight ball. Couldn't get a good position on it. And Acero's going to have the same problem here in a second or two. Well, I think he's got too much angle in the three ball to start with. They could play this. Even if he played it with a lot of left-hand English, he, I don't think he can hold good for this eight ball. He's trying to draw and leave the high cut. And he's blocked out. <coughs> he's calling the kick around the corner. Off the two rails. Kick the eight ball into the left middle. This will be a good shot if he gets this. It's all a question of whether he's using the diamond technique. Or whether he's just using the eye. Well, Acero. His chance is gone. And semi-pro. Wide open table. And just has to pick them off. To get into this match. So he's taking the 13. And it's always. It's a little bit risky taking the 13. Because that's obviously the nearest ball to his 8 ball. And it leaves him less to do with the cue ball. The 8 ball's in a good position anyway. So, barring a severe unforced error, he looks bound to run out. Straight away though, looking at the position he's left, this 14 and 11, he's either going to leave the combo or cut the 11. He has to make that choice though. Combo it is. And a, just a gentle one, because if he leaves the cue ball where the 14 is, he's hooking a Acero on the 8 anyway. Well, he didn't. We can dig down, play the little kill shot, or run through. Well, he's managed to hold it. So this for 2-1. So that's a steal. And a zero breaking in rack number four. So important. To get a ball in the break at least it gives you an option it gives you a choice to get started and we've lost a couple of balls the six and the nine have gone so that's a spot and a solid have gone but Acero's committed to the spots now and that five and four ball that's up at the top end of the table, he's going to have to deal with them right now if he can. Because they're in the top half where the eight ball is in the bottom half of the table. He can take the four and the five right now if he wants. And that 10 ball on the rail is just a little bit of a hamper. It's just a hindrance, but he's got it okay. He's avoided blocking himself off. 
Now, what's the angle like? Well, he's a bit straight. So this is about just rolling through, I think, for this one ball. And he's leaving it long again. Well, that's going to be a break and run here for a Cero. Oh, Semi-Pro has got a match in his hands. And the break goes back to Semi-Pro on rack number five. So this is where the pressure's on already. Semi-Pro needs to get a ball. And there's a couple of gone in. Now, these solids... Well, they all look good. The 7 is the only one that's a slight issue because it's blocked by the 15 up at the top end. He's got to go for the solids. But how does he deal with that 7 ball? He's got to find a way, and the best way to get down onto the 7 is off the 1. He's got to get a position on this 1 ball. Well, if he takes the 6, he can get out into the table. Well, I think... It's hard to say whether he played for the one there, but either way, he's overdone it. But now he's in a position to land on the one, and now he can drop behind the seven. And the eight ball goes past the 12, the pink stripe, so no problem there. Well, he's got rid of the five. And he just needs to get the right angle on this seven, because this isn't cut and dried yet. And he's the, he's the wrong side of the seven. And this is where he needs to get a little bit of a run off that 15, which he's done. And a fairly straight enough, well, not that straight, but simple enough eight ball. Should give him his second rack. So it's a bit cutthroat this match. Standard has been pretty good so far. Still 3-2 to a zero. But it's a break and run for semi-pro. And this time, no joy. But look at the mess that we've got in the top right there. All of those stripes all gathered round the eight ball. So this isn't going to be a clear cut run out oh good afternoon good afternoon Bav this match caught me unawares I was busy actually playing a game of snooker and semi-pro came in and told me that we're going to start their match so it was a bit of a rush job to get this uh, this stream up and running but it's been a good match so far, a good standard that's been down to the way the balls have been breaking the balls have been breaking quite good and balls going in in the break but this is one of these Untidy racks where one ball's blocked and the other, the eight ball's tied up. So a zero on the solids, semi-pro on the stripes, and neither player in any position to run this table.
Yeah, well, normally when tournaments like this are on, I normally check the brackets to see if anybody's arranged a match. Um, I don't think these guys had arranged their match earlier today when I looked. So obviously the two of them have just bumped into one another in the lobby and decided to go ahead. But at least they, at least they did me the honour of actually holding up the start of the match until I get into the room. Oh well, that shot there is now locked to six onto the eight. So we've now got a sandwich at this end of the table here. The six ball locked behind the eight, and then the. The stripe 14 ball locked in front of it. So somebody's going to have to make a move. And semi pro trying to free up the eight. He's played the combo on his 14 and potted his opponent solid, and that's a legal shot. Uh, in 8 ball world rules all you do is is you pass the uh, control of the table over to your opponent, it's not a foul and so what Semi Pro was trying to do there is just improve the situation he's got rid of the blocking ball but of course the 8 ball is his security blanket at the moment because at least it prevents a Cero from running out And the 8 ball is not easy to get to either. That is the other problem for a Cero. And there's not one of these balls is sitting in any good position to try and pot it and run that cue ball into those balls and move things around. So, a Cero doing the right thing, playing a good tight safety. And he's got semi locked up behind the 2 ball. Now, if I was semi-pro, I'd be playing to kick the the pink stripe ball up in the top left-hand corner because that way you're well away from the eight ball and you're not going to open anything up at that top end of the table. Now, that was not the best tactical shot. Okay, I think he's left nothing for Acero. In fact, I think he's locked him out. But that's just down to a bit of luck. It was not the best shot in terms of uh, keeping things tight if he didn't get the kick right I would have played I would have played for that ball there but it might work in his favour well it will now that Acero has uh, not hit anything and now the 8 ball is in the open and now Semi Pro's got ball in hand so we see how things turn so quickly in this rack Semi Pro played the shot I wouldn't have played but it, 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 it got a bit lucky and it's uh, probably going to pay off for him well this time he can pot the 14 and he can split these two balls if he wants and that's worked out nice so all the semi pros balls are all on the top end near the 8 ball and that's exactly the way you want it it makes the run out much easier. He's gone just a little further than he would like. Still looking good. Can take the 14, can take the, the 12 ball into the corner, can take the 11 into the middle first. Whatever he prefers, looks like the 11 first is probably the easiest. But what this is going to mean is we're going to be back all square. So Acero got off to a good start and a three rack to one lead. That's semi pro right back in it. And that was against the break. It's now semi pros break in rack number seven. So that was a good rack to win. And he's gotten a couple of stripes, I think, on the break. No, it was the 12 ball has gone and the 15, two, aye, two stripes. Or was it two stripes? 
Yes, it was. Spots are on the top and the stripes on the bottom. So he's going for the solids. And it's another slightly messy table with those two balls over on the right hand side next to the 13 orange stripe. The two and the six are not in a great position. Are you calling the bank the two? Looks like it. Oh, that's a good shot. He's now freed up the six ball, but how's his luck? Well, he's got no sight in the six, but he can cut the five and drop round the corner behind the seven for the seven in the same pocket. And then probably that four ball down the rail would be the next ball. Well, he's going to take it now that he's on it. Well, if he was going to take the seven, he's blocked himself out. So now he's completely out of line. And that's probably one where he should have taken the seven and avoided any risk of blocking himself there because if he'd taken the seven and finished in the four, on the rail, he'd have just been able to run down, so now he's got an extremely thin attempt at this six. Of course, that was far too thin. And this might be a little break in the proceedings that Acero needs, because Semi-Pro just clipped to six ball and no more, so it's still a legal shot, but now we've got an open table. Apart from that 11 ball, the 11 ball's the problem. For a zero. So he's nudged the one out of the way. And the 11's now, of course, open into that top right hand corner, but he's got to get there. And I think he's got a, a slight angle on the 11. And the other problem ball is that 13, which I think is pretty close to the rail. No, it's off the rail. He needs to keep running though. Now that's now in no man's land, so now he's got a difficult shot either way, whatever he chooses here. This 14 is a difficult enough cut, but how does he get on this 13 ball? And that needs to now slow down. The further up the table he goes, the more difficult shot he has. So it looks like the cut and across the table twice to leave the cut on this eight ball. Oh, a good effort. But the 13's hanging, so the chance is now gone to semi pro. Now, here's something that can go badly wrong here if he gets this connection on the one ball wrong. He's going to cut the six. And he's just played a little nudge onto it. Didn't get the double kiss and it's worked out pretty good, although I think he's straight on it. So just a long eight ball. And this will be semi-pro. His chance to go into the lead for the first time. In goes the eight. And Sammy Pro now leads by four racks to three. So that was a costly miss on that 13 ball for a zero. No, oh, that's the thing I never checked, just to let you guys know. A zero from Japan, Semi Pro from the UK. And something has dropped there. A couple of balls have gone. We've lost the three and a 15 again, so a spot and a solid have gone. Now he can pot that four ball and split the six with this shot. 
And he's freed up the six but tied up the seven. So this is a right muddle. And I don't think he's got any other option than to play the six ball. He can't see anything else but the edge of the seven. Well, can he see the edge of that five? I think he can. Let's have a look. Oh, he can cut that five into the middle. And he's got the two. Once again, though, how does he move things enough? There's too many blocking balls to actually move something here. And he's got to get lucky to get position in that six ball. Now he could cut the one. If he cuts the one ball with left English, he can certainly move the cue ball over to the left-hand side of the table and try and nudge something here. It's either that or he has to play a very good positional shot to find the window which is there between the 13 ball and the 8 ball to get to the 6. And then if he could draw off the 6 and split the, the 7 while well, he's Try to get into nudges him, and that's worked out pretty good. And he can draw off the seven and draw over to the right hand side of the six. But can he find a way out for the two? That's the question. Well, the path is there. A little bit of top and left, and he can. Let's have a look at how straight this six is. Well, it's not easy at all because it's too straight. Now he's going to have to ride his luck here if he can get good on it. Well, that's perfect. Always risky of locking himself out by the 11 ball there. Well, Acero isn't blinking an eye. An immediate response. And we're back all square. And a break and run from Acero. Semi-pro breaking off in rack number nine. Well, this is... Even these first, four eight, uh, first eight racks, this has been the best standard I've seen so far from any two players in a match. So the 15 ball again, that seems to be a... Uh, a fairly popular ball to go in in the break so far as well. It's been in about three or four times at least. So semi-pro nominates the solids. Now can he pot that seven? I think he can and just nudge back onto the nine. Get it out of the way and drop onto the one. You can pinch enough with the seven to be able to do that and always doesn't seem so keen now that was way off line but he actually got the cue ball in the position on the seven that he could have played the shot I was talking about but a bad miss in the two There's still there's problems to be dealt with here for Acero. His nine ball is hidden behind the seven and the nine and hasn't got a pocket. Now something's going to have to move. If he plays the cut and the 12 into the right middle, he's got to nudge something. And he's trying to find a gap between the 8 and the 5 here. 
and come in behind the seven and the one. Nope, went direct. Well, now what has happened? Well, 13 ball isn't a problem. But look at where his last strike ball is. That 10 ball. Completely tied up. I think he was trying to leave the bank. I don't know whether that would be in a bank anyway. No, he couldn't make the bank. The five was a blocker. So, Semi Pro took the opportunity just to pot a Cero strike ball and free up that pocket, knowing that things would still be safe. So, a Semi Pro has got the upper hand at the moment in this rack, as long as those balls remain locked up in the right hand rail but of course he's still got to do something about them if he's going to win the rack himself so we, we wait to see who makes the first move and that's not really improved things that much Well, there's a chance here for semi-pro. And he's just playing the lock-up. Now the deliberate foul is risky to take here because if he gives ball in hand to semi-pro he'll be locked up again behind those balls. So he's going to have to kick and hit something. I'm tired already. I've started yawning. I think it must be when I'm streaming. I just start yawning. Let's do another little plug, see if we can get anybody else that's interested. I think you're, you're the only one in the chat, Bab. I don't think anybody else is there. If there is, nobody's typing. So, 10 ball has been called, but that's just a proviso, and he's missed it. So now, semi pro. Has ball in hand. Now he's looking at the five ball. If he just pots the one, the five ball goes into the middle. Well, he split it, but he's actually knocked it to the rail. So he's going to have to deal with that later. Little draw off the three ball. 
Well, it's going to be the two, then the five down the rail. Just kill the cue ball for the eight. And Semi Pro will be back into the lead for the second time in the match. Break goes back to a zero for rack number ten, trailing by five racks to four. Needs a ball in the break if he's going to keep it. Going back and forth here with the racks, and something has gone in. But once again, we've got a mess in the right hand side. Now, is that a combo? No, it isn't because the ten's nudging the two. So the five ball and 15 has gone again. I should have started counting how many times that 15 ball has gone in in the break. I mean, it's gone in at least five times that I can remember. Well, Somehow the tennis squeezed off the two onto the rail and got in, so he did play the combo. So Acero is now committed to the solid, eh, the stripes. And again, this isn't a dead easy table to, to run. He's, he's only got the nine. And would ideally want to get rid of that 12 ball ASAP. Because again, it's the last ball after this nine ball that's down at the top end of the table. But how does he deal with that when he's dead straight? Well, he's played a little nudge. And he's nudged it tight to the rail. So it's now got slightly more difficult. 13 cuts into the middle. Cue ball's going to be running though. And needs to watch the scratch in this bottom left hand corner. well away from the scratch and he's running out of ball <coughs> balls to get on this 13 this will be a good shot but he's got the draw he needs to draw and find a gap and at least get a sight on this 13 ball This is quite an important visit here for Acero, trailing 5-4, he doesn't want to go any further behind and probably the most important shot he's going to play in the match so far. Semi-Pro was trailing 2-0 at the start of the match but it's been one rack either way up until now since then. He's tried to spin it around the table and even if that hadn't hit the three it would never have got there so now semi pro is ready to pounce now what does a Cero do he could try tying up the eight ball that's what he's thinking about i think even that's difficult to do because he's so close to the three and he'll concede ball in hand to semi pro well he's tried to tie the one hand of three up but he hasn't quite got there either so that didn't work out had to get a wee bit more weight on it and now semi pro with ball in hand has the chance to go two racks in front at the halfway stage of the match
Well, he could pot the four and just stun in behind the seven, take the seven into the same pocket if he wants, or he can run through off the rail. He just... Now, what does he do? He can come out behind. He's got two options, pot the seven and kill the cue ball or draw out off the six. He doesn't want to run to the rail and hit that... Uh, Stripe that's on the rail, but he just played a little delicate one. Leave it into the middle. Keep it simple, that's the rule. So semi pro with this eight ball is gonna open up a two rack gap at six racks to four. And even more emphasis in the break now because semi pro can Ram home is the advantage here if he gets a ball and is able to break and run. Well, two or three balls have gone in. Cue ball was almost one of them. But look at the table. This table is nice. There's not a ball tied up. Everything goes to a pocket. And it's been a very good standard this match, the best of the tournament so far, in terms of the quality that we've seen. So the commitment to the stripes from Semi Pro and position he's finished with the cue ball he's forced into taking the 13 he's got no real other choice and now well he's got that uh, pink 12 into the middle And could probably end up taking the 10 ball down the rail and then this 9 ball. But he's still got his 11 ball and the 8 ball is blocked off by the 8. So there's work to do here. This is not a simple cut and dried run out. How is that looking from his end? Well he's now got no shot. So Acero has a glimmer of hope in this rack. Now, is Semi Pro going to try and nudge that 11 off the 7? Well, that's what he's lining up here. He's looking to kick it to the rail and nudge it in off the back of the 7 ball. I don't think he can't squeeze that in clean. He's got to knock it in off the 7, which he's managed to do. The 7 ball goes in in the opposite pocket, but everything's fine. That's still a legal shot. And now. It's looking good. He can get rid of the 10, take the 9. Just bring that cue ball off the rail and up for the 8 into the opposite corner. So that was a, a well worked out run out by Semi Pro. And all of a sudden, the gap is widening and it's 7 4. And that's another break and run. The break goes back to Acero now. This rack is so important for him. He's got a ball in the break. And once again, these balls are broke very nicely. So he's looking at the layout. He's looking at his, his plan to run the table. And then going to commit and make that decision. And it's a very important one. So the choice has been made, he's going for the stripes and that 15 and 14 ball are just, they're not sitting nice. And he needs to come off the rail 
and find a small gap here to get rid of that 14 ball first. And he's under hit it. That's what he was playing. He's under hit the shot. He had that much of a gap to get onto that 14 and that's a poor one. And now he's got no alternative but to try and cut the 13. And I think that four ball is actually a pretty good guide for cutting that uh, orange stripe, but he's going to run into the one ball surely, or run into the five, one of the two. How does he get back up the table off this? That was always going to be the problem. And straight away, Semi Pro is going to be licking his lips. Now Cero can see the edge of the 14. That's off the rail. Well, he's looking at a bank. The gap's here between the two and the rail. And this is important. And he's well away. And, well, the one in the six aren't that big of a problem for semi-pro. He's just going to play the safety. And he's brushed off the one. And now semi-pro is in the hot seat here. He's got the table under control. And Acero needs a big break here to stay in this rack. Because this shot here could be his last shot. Just going to blow my nose a wee sec. So, semi-pro coming to the table, can deal with the one ball now, once again, he's not going for it, now, there's no way that he couldn't pot that one ball here, he's still waiting for a better opportunity, now here's hoping for his sake this doesn't backfire, because this 15 ball, if Acero picks the angle and can get the angle, I don't know whether he can, Let's have a look. No, no way he can get the angle to kick that in. This is a big, big shot. Even just to pick the point on the rail with the right English to hit the 15 is tough enough. But he's called it into the middle pocket. So now, this is the opportunity that Semi Pro has been waiting on. All the balls are there. He's going for the run out. And it's beginning to look a bit daunting here for uh, Acero. The way things are panning out. It was all going so even up to four all. And suddenly Semi Pros found that little bit extra. And he's looking a strong candidate to go 8-4 in front. Well, he's a little bit higher on the one. Shouldn't be a problem though. the eight goes and the zero now has a crisis on his hand the gap is widening the break has gone back to semi-pro so it's another one 
against the break. But this time, Semi Pro hasn't found a pocket. But this is. Uh, Well, there, there, there are balls there to be potted, but there's a bit of tidying up to be done as well. So it's going to be the comb with the one on to the 13 the strike but he's looking again because the 12 is over there on the left hand side with the 11 ball sort of middle of nowhere not doing a lot and that two balls hampering those two balls so he's went for the he's went for the two he's committed to the solids he's going to try and pot the four i don't know whether he can nudge into that one ball off this four but he really needs to do that when he has the chance it's difficult to say whether he can pinch enough with right English. That's what he's trying to do. You look at the cue. He's got the right English to punch the rail and nudge into the one. Now, how's that worked out? Well, it's not any better. One ball doesn't have a pocket. Oh, dear. Once again, another go at nudging in. You, need, you really need to hit that one ball full with pace. And he's just really got no joy there at all. And running out of opportunities here. Where's my bottle going? There we are. Well, this three ball cuts. Now, if he cuts it with right English again, the cue ball hits the rail and punches in towards the one. This is his last chance to move that one. But he, he got it too thin and he didn't have the English on it. If he did, we'll never know. And now he's locked out in the seven. He's locked out in the one, although you can see an edge of it, but he's trying to roll dead weight to the one. He's got to hit a rail, though, after hitting the one. Now, what's he thinking? Because he does not have many options here. If he can get this right and nudge the one and the cue ball bounces onto the rail, he's going to leave it reasonably safe. But it's now going to be ball in hand because he hasn't hit the rail after hitting the object ball. So it's another opportunity here for Semi Pro to steal another rack. That's how it's so it's so easy and it's so difficult this game. It's easy when the balls break nice and you you, you avoid the traffic and you can move the cue ball but it's so frustrating when there's that ball that you just can't quite get to and Acero had that experience here he just could not get that one promoted to a better position and all his efforts are going to go to waste here because it looks like Semi Pro is going to run away to another rack Now, Acero's not played bad in this match at all. It's just the break of the ball because he's 
he's potted pretty much everything he's had a sight on. But that's the difference. You can have two very good standard players that we've got here, but that break of the ball, that little bit of run, that little kick that works out in your favour, that just not happened here in the last few racks for Acero. And all the chances that Semi Pros had, he's pretty much stuck them away. So just off the rail and up the table if he wants or whatever. He's got various choices to what he prefers, but just a little roll in in the eight for nine four. Break goes back to Acero. And he's got a mountain to climb. But all it takes is that little bit of running to start going in your favour. And these matches can turn. It's going to take an almighty effort and a bit of luck and maybe a bit of help from Semi Pro for Acero to get back into this. But he's running out of racks. He doesn't have much to play with. So the table is open. The 10 ball has gone on the break. And for once the 15 ball hasn't gone. If he pots the 7, he'll be running into the 3. And if he takes the solids, he's five balls tied up with a 14. So it's a, it's a tough table for Acero to make any inroads into this match. So Acero on the solids. Well, now he's he's got no option. He's only got the six ball and he's got no way of getting to those balls at the top end of the table. And he's a lot of right spin off that rail to check the cue ball. He's managed to get an angle on the three, so now here's the important shot. He's got to run into them. He can't rely on just getting on the one with an angle to move that five. Well, that's what he's done. And it's all gone wrong because he's dead straight. And he can only fall behind the five. But the five does go into that top pocket but the cue ball really needs to stop exactly where the one ball is to have that shot in the five and all he can play is top in the cue ball he can't get to the bottom of the cue ball he's going to have to dig well in the end he just played the safety had that one ball dropped he would have at least had a shot in the five Semi pro immediately gets rid of the blocking ball and has he covered the five? Pretty much so. And uh, unless Acero can pull off an extremely good shot at some point on this five ball, is uh, he's looking at his chances drifting away in this match because semi-pro if he gets a sniff here would be odds on favourite to run out
Now, I haven't seen him call a pocket because even then he can only see half of the five ball and the five balls not get any pocket to go to. Well, I feel certain that if uh, Semi Pro doesn't have a shot on here, he's going to have uh, a Cero tied up in a second or two when he gets to the table. Well, ball in hand now for Semi Pro. And just looking and studying where they should go first to start his run out. So it's looking like the 13. And then of course, we're looking at the combo. Would like to get rid of that 14 ball sooner rather than later which is a green stripe at the top end of the table and he's got a shot on it Well, there is just a glimmer of a chance here for a zero, but no problem, an awkward cut in that 15 ball there that Semi Pro left him, left himself but managed to stick it away. So this 8 ball has taken Semi Pro to the hill. He's leading by 10 racks to 4 and with the break in rack number 15, the rack that he needs for the match. But they haven't, they haven't broken too well. Again, he might play the combo here. Eight balls tied up with a 14 in the top right hand corner, so that's a, an ugly position up there. We'll have a look at the bracket at the end of this match to see how things shape up. Well, the 14 ball's been called, so it's going to be a 15, 8 ball, 14 ball combo. And that was by way of opening up the 8 ball. As it is, the 14's not going in. A semi pro. Tied up with no option but to finally pot a ball and he's made the choice, he's on the solids. Now he can pot the two and he can nudge that 15 ball out of the way to open up the eight ball should he get that far. He's declined that option because that was relying on luck to get on his next ball and the real only ball he could get on was probably the one 
big risk to have taken that if he'd played it. Which is probably a very good reason to why he didn't play it. And the other problem ball for him is his five ball, the orange one, which is sitting right in no man's land in there. And content to play the safety. That's a good shot. I think he's blocked out the one. Or has he? No, he hasn't. Semi pro can just see enough of the wood back. He could see the five. Well, that's another reasonable enough safety this time. He's locked in behind the eight. That's a good shot by Acero. And he's hoping for ball in hand here. But he's not going to get it. The hit in the one's been made. Cue ball hit the rail. But it is not a good table for a run out. 10 ball stuck in the middle between the 1 and the 11. Just past the middle pocket. And that, uh, what ball's that up on the rail? The 14. 14 on the rail. Although it pots though, if you can get on it. That now has opened up the 14. He's got the 11 down the rail here into this bottom right hand corner after that. But he's still got to split this 12 from the 6 at the bottom right hand corner. He needs to have some sort of angle on this 13 ball on the left hand side if he's going to ma make a move on that 12 ball, the pink one. Because this is the one that's holding up the run out, that one there. And he needs to do something, and this 5 ball's in an awkward place. Right, let's have a look. He's got the angle. He doesn't need an awful lot of English to get the cue ball across. He doesn't want too much. And, well, he's no choice now. Now I think he can cut that. He needs to hit it very hard and cross his fingers. It looks extremely difficult 
In fact, it might not even get to the pocket. I think that's clutching at straws for him. But he's got a, an even tougher shot in the nine. I don't even think he can cut it when you look at it from this side. I think I was getting a bit over ambitious for him. Well, if he cuts the nine and tries to draw onto the rail and come off over this way, the five's in the way again. It's a big deep draw. Now, I think he can cheat the pocket. If he can pot that ball, that was an excellent shot. But it's going to the rail. He's trying to just spin around a six slightly to to hit this ball fuller. And it's a delicate shot. And it's a foul. And that was his only lifeline there. Had he got almost onto that ball to pot it. So ball in hand for semi-pro. And this run out for the match. And... Acero was always swimming against the tide in that rack. Really tough. Not getting any great opportunity to split that ball and, and get it into the open. And it was always a safety net for semi-pro. Leaving that there. Well, there's the mistake. And semi-pro... Has saw the finishing line too soon. And the first real big error. With the match in his hands. And Acero lives to fight another rack. And you just take your eye off the ball for a second. And mistakes get made. And Acero... Has got a couple of balls in the break. We've got three straight balls down in this bottom left hand corner. The 15 is almost a combo. I think he can play the 13 onto the 12 and then onto the 15. And make that combo. But if you look at the top end of the table. If he chooses the stripes. You've got this mess here to deal with. Whereas if he takes the solids. The 1 goes. The 1 goes. The 4 goes. The six goes, and you know, that is, that's the nine that's down here anyway. That's the three ball. He can get onto the three from this side. So he's decided to go for the solids. And he's going to play, well, is he trying to hit it in off the three? Or can he squeeze it in off the jaw? He's playing it off the three. That's a good shot. Now, the four ball goes past the 14. We know that, so it's just getting good on it. In goes the four. So ten four semi pro with a an unexplained miss into that right middle pocket and two racks have gone and a zero is back to ten six and what's more Semi Pro has broke off in the next rack and he's got a couple of balls in the break again. And I think Semi Pro, oh, I thought he'd maybe had a connection problem there. A little bit of a delay before his cue showed up. 
So the five ball has gone and the seven has gone. And uh, both of them are solids. So the six is tied up with the ten. So he looks as if he's going to commit to the stripes playing the combo. Well, semi pro's got a lifeline there. He's got the one option, which is that 12 ball. And the 8 ball is in an awkward place. It's blocked by the 1. So there's still, for the time being, a glimmer of a hope here for a zero. As long as that 8 ball stays up there, you've got to get good position on it if you're going to pot it into the top right-hand corner. And another mistake from Semi Pro. So Acero on the solids. And he's desperate to get a shot here. And I don't think he's got anything. Well, the three cuts, he has to go all out for the three if he's going to do anything with this rack. That's the only shot he's got, and it's an all or nothing shot. He's still got the lifeline of the eight ball been blocked off by his one ball for that corner pocket, so you feel he's got to go for this. And he'll be thanking his lucky stars that that uh, three ball didn't nudge into the one there. It wasn't easy, but he had to go for it. So we've had a couple of mistakes here from Semi Pro. I think he's maybe just getting a wee bit ahead of himself, taking his eye off the ball. I mean, there's. I think uh, I don't know what the saying is, but when you've got your opponent down, what I would say is make sure you keep them down. Don't give them any glimmer of a chance of getting themselves back into this game. Straight away there, he's potted, or Acero has potted uh, and conceded the table. Or did I miss something there? Maybe I blinked at the wrong time. But either way, semi pro still in the stripes and needs to get good on the eight ball and he hasn't so what's he going to call here he can play the cut on the eight and call it into that pocket along with the one ball that's if the, the eight ball would track in with the one but I, I would think that's very unlikely But he's calling the bank, and this is an ugly looking bank. You've got to pick the point on that side rail where you're punching that eight ball to to make the bank. And it's somewhere near that diamond. And he's just missed it. And that three ball is locked up with the eight, so a zero needs to get up onto this four but the six is down this end but he needs to try and get that three moved either off the one right now and hope he gets lucky on his next ball or just lock semi pro up Now whatever Acero does here, he does not want to leave this cue ball down the bottom end of the table here. He doesn't want to play a safety and leave the cue ball down here anywhere. Because Semi Pro is going to just uh, call the bank. And 
And at the same time, if Acero's going to run himself up to that top end of the table, he doesn't want to get too much juice into this and risk scratching up in this top corner. So he's either going to go forward or come back the way. He's going forward and he's nearly scratched in the middle. So now he needs a delicate little safety. And he could find himself in trouble in a second if he keeps this three close to the eight. Because semi-pro will just hook him. This is an important shot. And he's played it well. Did you get kicked from the from the stream, Bob? So ball in hand for a zero. No, well, certainly. I, I'm not. I'm actually watching my output uh, on my second monitor. I'm not watching my Twitch channel because I've got the chat coming up my second monitor. Unless it was just a, a drop in connection. But anyway, the important thing here is is that Acero has won another rack, and it's back to ten seven. Now, three racks ago. When Semi Pro had a couple of balls to pot to win the match, and also in that last rack, or was it the previous one? I can't remember now, but he's made two glaring errors at the wrong time. And you know what happens in pool and billiard games if you take any liberties or you just take your eye off the ball, then the run of the ball might never go in your favour for the rest of the match. But maybe it has here because Acero's broke off and he's come up dry. And it has to be said, this table doesn't look too bad this time. So semi-pro on the stripes. And uh, these stripes are looking good the more I look at them. Although the 9 ball is blocking the path for the pink uh, 12 ball. And it looks as if he's going to try and get well. He's thinking about it into the middle. It's tough over that 3 ball. He's going to have to wait in a better opportunity. Well, now it's getting slightly ugly. The 10 ball's locked off by the 9 into that corner. But if you look at it from this side, it looks a lot nicer. If you can get the cue ball down here. Well he's going to go for the cut. In which case he'll be splitting the 9 and the 10. And that's worked out pretty good. Well now. It's gone tough. He's got a tough nine to cut over this one ball. And the pressure's on it. And in it goes. But he's got to deal with the 11 ball. He's got the 15. And he's got to find the gap to go on this 11 and he's gone too far was looking to get that into the middle but he's still got the cut into this corner and he's going to have to work the cue ball to get a shot in the 8 and Acero sitting with his fingers crossed and he's got the 11 and he's got the cue ball around so finally Semi-Pro is going to put this match to bed 
This eight ball will give him the win at 11 racks to seven. And um, it could have been all over three racks ago, but the mistake was made. But uh, this match, certainly, it could have been a lot closer if the balls were running a bit better early on. But even so, at four all, it was looking to go either way. And then semi-pro pulled away. And then with that little sort of uh, brain fart, as they call it, and Acero got those three racks to get himself almost back in it. But semi-pro is a winner. He goes through 11 racks to seven. You're welcome, Bav. And anybody else that was maybe watching probably wasn't any. But before we go, we'll go in and have a look at the bracket. And uh, we'll see that uh, semi-pro is through to round number five and he's going to have a wait because the dates on this round the matches have to com uh, be completed by june the 14th so that's a a fair bit away and there's a few results still to come through before that happens meanwhile if we look at the one loss side we'll try and find a zero and he's sitting there and he's got a long wait as well so these guys won't be playing any other matches until quite some time about a week away at least and uh, if we have another look up and down the bracket we can see that there's no other matches scheduled uh, as far as I notice um, we'll have a look further up we've got Gung Ho waiting to play River City we've got uh, what the hell names that ha Ham I've never seen him before, he was waiting to play Bav. Um, uh, Bav, you might get lucky there if this... Uh, yeah, if we look at the first round matches, Biggs and Ham both forfeited. I'm going to suggest that you're going to get a bye to the next round because I think that guy signed up and I've, I don't think I've ever seen him in the lobby before and I think uh, you'll get a bye to the next round. That's if you're still watching, Bav. Um, and you'll play the winner of Gung Ho and River City, it looks like. And we've also got Quack to play Seni in round number uh, round number three. And the winner of that match, Frankel's already waiting there for you. So Frankel, another strong player in this tournament. Uh, that would be a good matchup with Frankel and the uh, semi pro. And further up. We see that Bedhead, who beat Larry 11 0 the other day, is waiting to play Mr. Bill or Boots. Well, surprise, surprise, this match has actually been scheduled. But I'm still I'm still betting that Boots doesn't turn up. And Bill gets a bye. So that's scheduled for uh three days time at 2 p.m british summer time so with that folks and anybody that's still watching uh that was a surprise uh match that we had today well bav he's not going to show this guy i've never seen his name in the lobby uh you've got to buy he'll he'll, he'll not turn up he never turned up for his first match neither did biggs so you've got plenty of time to get practice in before you play your next match um, with that though, I'm going to bid you a good afternoon and hopefully we'll see you again sometime with the next match in this tournament. So thanks for watching Bav and anybody else and we'll see you later.